afternoon, everyone. It is my responsibility to take us through this particular section of today's community media symposium. And this section is the lecture section. And so it is with great pleasure that I welcome you uh, wherever you are, whether you're in this space or online, and wherever you are in the, across the, the, the world, um, we um, welcome you um, to the Caramac WJC Public Lecture 2023 under the theme Community Media Radio in the 21st Century Caribbean. This particular event is being uh, hosted by the West Mac Group, a group of final year integrated marketing communication students at UEMONA Western Jamaica campus, and we want to uh, acknowledge uh, the work that they have done so far in not only putting on the, the, the symposium, but also hosting this particular lecture. We also uh, would like to therefore, by extension, uh, welcome the lecturers who are among us uh, this afternoon, those who have been supportive of the effort here at the UEMONA Western Jamaica campus and who are sitting in and listening on this, on this particular lecture. Uh, and in so doing, welcome Dr. Alpha Obika, the uh, CARIMA coordinator and lecturer here at the UEMONA Western Jamaica campus. In fact, he, is, he has um, responsibility for the integrated marketing communication program. I also want to mention Dr. Livingston White, the director of CARIMAC, and welcome him to this lecture as well. Thank you very much for your leadership of the School of Communication, and we appreciate the support that you have you have been giving us. I want to welcome our partners from across the Caribbean, uh, UNESCO, other organizations that have always supported the, the community media and in particular the development of community radio across the Caribbean space. Our friends, wherever you are, thank you very much for engaging with us this afternoon. I we want to take the opportunity to remind you that this week is Carmack Open Week, and today um, would have you know, been the kickstart of that week. And tomorrow afternoon, we have the, the Agri Brown Distinguished Lecture Series, and that will be done by Dr. Carolyn Walcott. Uh, in fact, I've been saying that we have uh, two Caribbean persons presenting, one in this lecture and one, and one tomorrow who are actually uh, natives of, of Guyana. Uh, that's quite an interesting coincidence, I think, Dr. Obika and company, <laughs> that we'll have doc, Dr. Walcott tomorrow as, as well as um, Dr. Rampasad today. Folks, one of, the, one of the things that we, we have come to recognize over the years is that I am having a little bit of, you're having technical problem there, I'm having a little bit of a problem opening my. Opening my thing, I think I have a, I have a challenge. Um, Lini or Dr. Beacon, can you just bring me the, the, the bio, please? All right, it's, it's, yeah. So one of the things that we want to recognize, community media um, have not really been getting the kind of support that we expect it to be given. Um, and broadly speaking, we think that it's an in a, it's an area that you know would be we we need we not, we not only need to do deeper research in, but also to see how we can expand the thinking and the and the practice around um, community media. 
The, the, the fact is that community media continue to play a critical role in the development of our society. And especially in this new digital age, we need to deepen the conversation around um, what, would, what the impact, how it has evolved, how it has served the, the whole evolution of, the, of, of Caribbean media in general, um, but certainly how it has contributed to the development of communities across the, the, the Caribbean space. How it has contributed to the development of, of Caribbean space. Um, community media are even more essential to fostering communication among societies with shared languages, cultures, and values. And I, I think that we recognize that it's very, very critical in the facilitation of meaningful participation and active engagement of particularly vulnerable groups, vulnerable groups in terms of geography, vulnerable groups in terms of, of, of interest. Um, there is a lot that is happening. There are lots of underserved rural and suburban communities that uh, depend on the, the community radio in particular to, to, to present their, the, the issues and the challenges that they're facing um, at, at the community level. I'm not going to go too deeply into some of what we've, we've seen happening across the Caribbean. UNESCO would have shared in, in, um, some of that and shared in the experience. We know that some of the groups that are particularly in Jamaica, we have groups in the rural part and we also have community stations in the urban centers. Um, but certainly we have seen the impact of community radio on the development of rural spaces. Uh, Jet FM in St. Mary, for example, uh, Radio Abeng up in a compound, uh, more FM in, in Montego Bay here in St. James. These are but a handful of, of uh, community radio um, that's playing critical role in development of, the, of media and the development of the, the varying groups across um, vulnerable groups across the Caribbean space. As we watch the information communication technology change um, changes in such with such rapidity, um, and and we see more and more the engagement in the social media spaces in particular. Um, it is even it is even more of a, a I would say an imperative that those of us who are in in, in media that we um, seek of the role of community media and more specifically to address this particular topic this time, community radio in the 21st century Caribbean um, so we have we have pulled together a, 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 an interesting panel of presenters, but for this particular lecture, we have asked a colleague who has been doing tremendous work um, in the community media space. And I, as I, I love to say, um, a, 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 a friend, because we have been working together uh, with Dr. Obika, of course, in trying to establish a kind of a Caribbean think tank, a Caribbean media think tank that would bring some, some needed focus to this particular area um, of the discipline in media and communication. And, and so it is, with, it is with great pleasure that I, I, I introduce to you Dr. Tejrani Rampasad Shorka, um, my Guyanese colleague from the University of Guyana or originally, um, to, to do this lecture this afternoon. She's an experienced professional with a demonstrated history of working in education, research, and audiovisual production right across all these industries. She's skilled in a variety of areas, both in the theoretical and practical aspects of media and communication studies, with a strong focus on behavior and social change communication. Her creative abilities include photography, as well as the production of content for audio, video, print, and multimedia platforms. As an academic, a researcher, and a human being, she is interested in works that encourage positive social change. 
She believes that the transformation of societies should be in keeping with basic human rights and a strong respect for cultural diversity. One of her guiding philosophies is to live like it's heaven on earth, and as such, she identifies as a citizen of the world. In May 2020, she was awarded the Doctor of Philosophy in Communication from the University of Hyderabad, India, with the thesis titled Mapping Community Radio in South Asia. A systematic analysis of the alternative media scape in Nepal, India, and Bangladesh. Prior to this, she completed a Master of Arts in Communication with specialization in audio and video production from the University of Hyderabad, India, a Bachelor of Sciences in Public Communication, and a Diploma in Computer Sciences, both undergraduate courses at the University of Guyana. She also holds several professional development certificates in accounts, zoology, photography, music, human resource, and health. In her free time, she enjoys traveling, reading, playing cricket, and assorted card and board games, listening to music, and enjoying tasty cuisines. She's been doing work with the UNESCO chair in community media in India, and as I said before, she has also been doing work in trying to establish a, a community media think tank here in the Caribbean. Um, she's also the coordinator, Master of Communication Studies and Lecturers, both within the, the Center for Communication Studies at the University of Guyana. Currently, she's an independent researcher working on some personal and academic projects and is a reserved part-time lecturer with the Center for Communication Studies at the University of Guyana. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome my friend and colleague, Dr. Tajani Rampasad Skorko. Thank you. And visible. But she's not hearing me. She's not hearing me. No. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> it's just gone ten eighteen here. In question that was asked is what is the role of community media, sometimes I refer to this as CM, and more specifically community radio or CR in the 21st century Caribbean. Um, in order to address this question, I've divided today's presentation into four parts. Um, the first would be situating community media, and sometimes I will use these terms interchangeably um, within this particular guest talk, but if I say community media, I'm also referring to community radio. Um, I will share quite a lot of the developed framework from my reference doctoral project with you, which will all tie into the third part, which is the mapping CR in the Caribbean region. And then based on all the information I would have uncovered um, so far, um, proposed role of CR in the Caribbean from these global lessons. 
Okay, I'm seeing that you cannot see my screen. One second. There we go. This is visible now. My apologies. My apologies. Yes. Um, so unfortunately, my chat just disappeared. It might be a bit of the internet connection. Um, yes. So as I was saying, this is the layout for today's presentation. The first part is situating community media. So I will jump right into that. Um, so I always like to start something off with a little bit of a quote from some of the um, readings that I've gone through. So today's one is from Gerard. Um, an alternative to commercial and state radio, community radio's most distinguished characteristic is its commitment to community participation at all levels. While listeners of commercial radio are able to participate in programming in limited ways, CR listeners are the producers, managers, directors, evaluators, and even the owners of the stations. So as we go through today's talk, just keep this in mind. When we talk about community radio, the listeners are also the producers, managers. Basically, they run the community radio stations as well as they are part of the audience that these stations broadcast to. So keeping that in mind, um, I always like to go from a broad picture also. So community radio fits into media, but what is mass media? Um, media is a broad term that encompasses many different forms of communication outlets used to distribute information, entertainment, and data. Mass media relates to those forms that can reach mass audiences in short amounts of time via content broadcasting. Media includes social media, film, radio, video games, books, magazines, television, and so forth. So just getting an idea of what mass media is. And I think uh, quite a lot of us, if not all of us, are very, very familiar with this. But the question stands reason, if we have mass media, why do we need community media? And before I get into that, I just want to share some of the quotes that I found. So one of them by uh, Beauchamp and Baran, mass media entities are commercial businesses focused on profit making through entertainment. So this is how these two authors see mass media. Jim Morrison see, um, at something that's one of my very favorite here, whoever controls the media controls the mind. And um, it's something that, the media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent. And that is power because they control the minds of the masses. And the final one here, to be honest with you, I worry about concentration of ownership in media, where you have a handful of media conglomerates largely controlling what we see, hear, and read. So this kind of jumps into the idea of why do we need community media? So before the why, we should understand what is. So what is community media? And by extension, CR. So some of the universally acceptable foundational aspects associated with CR, some of the ideas from the thinkers in the social and behavior change communication field, this is what I have to say. So CR ideally operate on a not-for-profit basis. They feature content produced by the local communities, and they are owned, operated, and managed by the communities they represent and produce content for. So things to keep in mind again, not-for-profit, produced by local communities, owned, operated, and managed communities. So overall, when we're situating community media, when we're trying to get the idea of what community media are, what community radio is, this is what I found to be a somewhat encompassing um, explanation. So CR is used by marginalized communities to share their own stories, 
firstly among themselves and secondly with the wider population since they or their stories are often ignored or minimized by mass media. They provide a voice for the voiceless. And this is something you will see in quite a lot of the literature. Um, authors will refer to the fact that community media are filling a gap there of minimized populations, marginal populations, and they see community media, community radio, as being a voice for the voiceless. Um, some of the pictures you're seeing here are from my doctoral work, and they give you an idea of where these radio stations can be located, as well as who the community are. And you, you can see that there are two very youthful presenters are from the and Bangladesh. So now that we have situated community media and hopefully community radio, we have an idea of what um, types of initiatives are, um, I'd like to now present some of the work. And again, these are situated within the part of the question, um, the global lessons part. So in my doctoral work, obviously I cannot sh share everything with you in about 30 to 40 minutes. So I've selected these um, five areas and I will go through them. So the first one is to understand the South Asia region. And I'm sure that you will see quite some similarities with the Caribbean region there. It would be based on the conceptual framework that was developed. The third one, the third part would be the methodology. Uh, very quick. Um, the fourth one would be the community media, well, the community radio database that I created through my doctoral work. And the fifth one will give you some insights into the thematic areas used for understanding CR. And again, some of the pictures you see are from the South Asian region that I took. You can see that some of them are very rural, some are urban. Um, the work that some of the people are involved in, and of course, food, because that is a very good identifier of regions, some similarities there. So onwards into the second part of the presentation. In the South Asia, um, when I address South Asia, I was addressing eight countries in particular focus on Nepal, India, and Bangladesh. So the eight countries would be Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, the Maldives, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Bhutan, in addition to Bangladesh and India. So what does this region have? What are the unifying factors for community radio within these um, eight countries? So they have large regions that reside in rural areas. There are similarities regarding politics and the culture there. And there's a common development logic that prevails within the region um, where a lot of people think that developedly meant taking ideas from Western or the more developed countries and just transposing them into these societies. Initially meant taking ideas from Western or the more developed countries and just transposing them into these societies. Um, however, what happened is that you find that that one size does not fit all. So the community radio um, was used to encourage people's participation in their own development. So the use of these media enabled people's inclusion in society on their terms through self-determination, using their voices and participating in decision-making processes that affect them. So that's just a very um, simplified way of looking at the South Asian region and finding these unifying factors for community radio. So the next part gives you some insight into the conceptual framework. How do we look at community radio? So there are a lot of different concepts and um, conceptual works that can be used, but these were the five that I found um, useful for the work that is being presented and that I hope can be used in the Caribbean. So we looked at the paradigm shifts, paradigmatic shifts in understanding communication. And this is basically understanding how we move from a diffusionist era to a participatory era. So when we talk about diffusionists, we're talking about that idea of broadcasting where somebody goes at a radio studio or a television studio, and they're just basically broadcasting content to the masses. Um, what happened is that there was a shift in that diffus um, diffusion of information, the broadcasting, to having more participatory aspects of it. This is where it was no longer a one-way flow of information, but you saw 
information going back and forth. People are now interacting with the content and giving more feedback. They're becoming more involved. So it was participatory. Um, then we look um, at participatory communication and development. And this is looking at transmitting knowledge from developed to underdeveloped, the problems with that, and the need for us to now acknowledge that grassroots knowledge is just as important as what is termed as westernized knowledge. We have a lot of information within traditional societies, within marginalized groups of people who do not have access to media, but they can play a huge role in changing society for the better. So grassroots knowledge is very important. The third one, um, conceptual framework, was looking at the public sphere, counter public sphere, and civil society. And all of this was just within the arena of looking at the traditional public sphere where um, educated people were the ones with the loudest voices there and those who are deemed as being uneducated because they do not have formal um, learning, they were marginalized, they were quiet. So this is where the idea of the voice of the voiceless comes into play with the counter public sphere. We're looking at having an active civil society that can now bring about this change that community radio is there for. The fourth one, um, conceptual framework that was used was community. And obviously we're talking about community media and we're talking about a subset community radio. There's also participatory video, theater and so forth. We need to understand what community is. And there are several ways to approach this, but the two that I found most useful were that community can be defined by geography. We're looking at the physical boundaries. So for example, we have countries in the Caribbean area, we have Jamaica, we have Guyana, we have Trinidad and Tobago and so on. Or we can be talking about a community of interest. And this is where people who have same thinking um, form a group. So for example, uh, and since we're doing this from Jamaica, um, you will have Jamaicans living in the diaspora. You have Jamaicans living in the United States of America, but they're still interested in Jamaican content. So this is where that community of interest comes into play. And something that is very useful within this whole notion of community is that community is defined by who it includes as well as who it excludes. And the final um, conceptual framework that was utilized was alternative media, community media, citizens media. And what was found here is that there are a variety of terms for the sector that challenge the status quo. Um, there, while we are saying community media, community radio, we find that there are very similar um, initiatives out there, but they're referred to by different names. So for example, you have development media, you have radical media and so forth. Um, Basically, within this whole arena of alternative media, we're looking at media that bring about changes in power relations that are there. We're talking about media that um, grant access to marginalized people. They encourage participation and there is representation of the society of, at large. So that's a very, very quick and simplified um, way of looking at the conceptual framework that was used. Again, I say these are just five areas and I'm sure through different readings, especially um, specific to the Caribbean region, you might find quite a few more. Um, very, very quickly, I will go through the methodology that was used um, in the doctoral project. So a mixed methods approach was used to explore, analyze, and describe the CR sectors in Nepal, India, and Bangladesh. And what you see these terms explore, analyze, and describe, it shows that um, it's a first time bit of research that was done at this level, mapping a region as a whole, instead of looking at just initiatives within um, specific countries or just looking at countries. So it was very exploratory and it was very descriptive in nature. Um, I used a mapping methodology because I want to see the patterns, I want to see the graphic representations of the knowledge experience and the perceptions of the people who are operating within the community radio space. Um, and when I talk about mapping methodology, I'm not talking about the ones in geography alone, I'm looking at thematic and conceptual mapping as well. So just very quickly, uh, thematic mapping, this looked at the spatial distributions of an attribute. For example, the profiles of community members within the national borders. Um, we're looking at maybe men, women, children, and youth, uh, people with disabilities, 
um, that's how thematic mapping was used in this case. Reference mapping is very similar to geography, it's cartography. So we're looking at the administrative divisions and the topography of the countries and so forth. Um, how many states each country had versus what would be their natural regions? Is it hilly? Is it um, waterways and so forth? And conceptual and mind mapping, we're looking at relations between various concepts and how we represent them with words and diagrams. So very, very simplified um, look at the methodology that was implemented in the South Asia region. Now, having run through that very quickly, I know um, it was quite a phase, but I needed to set that little bit of context. So one of the major outputs from my doctoral project was the community media database that I developed. And in this database, there were two um, major aspects. One would be looking at country mapping, and the other would be looking at the mapping of initiatives. So within the country mapping, based on the desk review work that I did, I was able to pull out these main categories of um, information that existed, management and networking, policies and guidelines, economic sustainability, community and participation, programming, technology and infrastructure. So within management and networking, um, in Nepal, India, Bangladesh, you can see that there were different types of initiatives here, um, organizations that help with the networking and help with the setting up of these community registrations and the running of them. Um, notably within Nepal, there was Akarab, and this is the main community radio organization there. Um, India, they have these surveillance they're called uh, on World Radio Day, February 13th, um, almost every year, I think. During COVID, they didn't have them, but now they're back on track. Um, and this is where a lot of the networking opportunities happen and the simulants are organized by the Ministry um, for Information and Broadcasting in India. In Bangladesh, they have the BNNRC, which is a key organization for helping the community registrations to be set up. Um, policies and guidelines, um, looking at this bit of information, um, what was found is that you have the national level media laws, but then you have CR specific policies in some countries then you have guidelines that are not legally enforceable, but they're things that practitioners sign on to. Economic sustainability addressed um, areas where there was funding for these stations. And at the time when this research was conducted, um, between 2015 to 2017 desk review, there was no information, as you can see there, about economic sustainability of these stations, initiatives within India. Um, community and participation looked at the members of the community and to what level they participated in these initiatives. Um, for example, the desk review for Nepal, we only got inferred information about the communities. There was none specific, but when you read, you can get an idea that they have people participating. There was some generalized information about the community saying that, you know, we cater to about um, 100 villages within the reach of the station or something like that. Bangladesh had very, very specific information about their community participants. Programming is looking at the type of content that is available um, via the stations. And you can see limited information for Nepal and India, but Bangladesh had a little bit more and um, address the thematic areas. And then technology and infrastructure, you're looking at the set of the physical spaces where these stations are um, set up the size of the stations, um, how many rooms they have, what type of technology you're using, their transmitters and so forth. So this is what was found in the desk review from a country's perspective. From an initiative perspective with the desk review, um, information about the very, very specific uh, stations, what was found is that you had information about establishment, when they were establishment, where they're located, um, contact information, the profiles of the communities, the type of programs, and basically what the stations were involved in. So remember, this database was set up initially to see what information existed there. And um, with the initiatives, information was collected from July 2016 to 2017. Um, I will not go through all the very small graphs. I'm sorry for those who might be connecting via um, a cell phone or a smaller device. But this big orange line would be Nepal. And at that time, at the end of the 2017 period, 
Nepal had 309 community radio stations and information involving what years they were established, uh, 235 of them. In India, there were 193 community radio stations at the end of 2017, and the years established information there was for 159. And Bangladesh, they had 17 stations and information about um, some graphs, some visual aids to help us see um, how these stations were established and the reasons for their establishment and so forth. So, for example, um, the reasons for establishment, advocacy, and empowerment um, within Nepal, 25 of the stations made reference to this. In India, 67 of those stations made reference to this, and 16 of the 17 in Bangladesh. So, you see ideas like documentation, entertainment, information, education. These are some of the reasons why they were established that owned the license for the station or the, um, in the organization. So, for example, community based organizations, religious groups, educational institutes, government, and NGOs. Um, so, we also saw some information about the types of partners. Urban, um, the, the profiles of the participants when we look at children, LGBTQ, men, PWD, women, youth were the ones that were identified. The types of programs that they had, um, the thematic areas, and we're looking at agriculture, career, culture, economics, education, gender, human rights, and this whole, and then the genres of the content that is being produced, if they're doing interviews, if they're doing news, PSAs, reports, talk shows, documentaries, and so forth. So having given you a glimpse of the data, coming out of that desk review, what I was able to do was to change these country mapping thematic areas here, management and networking, policies and guidelines, economic sustainability. There, I was able to refine this now based on the information and create these six thematic areas. So policy environment, communities, programming, technology and infrastructure, networks, partners, and networking. So a little bit of each of them, and then I will give you the main findings. Um, so the policy environment, um, I found information that there are constitutional provisions. So we started at very macro level for each country. Then there were national media policies within the countries. Then national CR specific policies. So CR was differentiated from the mass media um, sector there. And then there were national ethical guidelines. Ethical guidelines are not enforceable by law, but they're things that practitioners sign on to. Within ownership of management information that was found regarding the types of owners, the approaches to management and communication, the internal policies within each CR station, their ideas on economic sustainability and ideas on editorial independence. Um, when addressing commission was found about the participants, how they're motivated and mobilized, and how they are basically trained, the capacity building sharing um, sessions for participants to make them better understand how to produce content for radio. Within programming, um, information was found for thematic areas, genres, and how content is selected and produced. Technology and infrastructure looked specifically at the physical structure and the equipment and the care of the equipment and the infrastructure. And finally, the networks, partners, and networking looked at the importance of having this set up. The partners and networks at the local, national, regional, and international level, and how creating awareness and goodwill is important for the sustainability of these initiatives. So there is a very macro glance at the policy environment, so you better understand the information there. So within the policy environment, within the legal area, the constitutions and national media policies and the community radio policies, the guidelines, ethical guidelines that practitioners sign on to. Um, and then you have the codes 
of conducts and internal policies within the non-legally enforceable area. Sound here? Do you have the license holder who, who are the legal holders, um, the legal owners of these, these entities? But then when we look further into it, you have the CR our team members, the so people that are there, there is a feeling of ownership. So it was um, there. This was very, very important because you need participants to feel this type of ownership to the stations that they work in. And it's not just about legal ownership. Um, within the approaches to management and communication, the approaches top, bottom, bottom up and horizontal were all there. They were all present within the station. But the one that was preferred was horizontal, meaning it's participatory and inclusive in nature. And the methods and techniques, they were formal and informal, written and verbal. But the important thing within the communication and management would be the horizontal here, the participatory nature of um, that exists in these in Nepal, Indian, and Bangladesh. Internal policies. Um, the stations have them because they're very um, important for the efficiency and effective operation of missions and to ensure that the communities are being prioritized. Um, and these internal policies address both management and production aspects of the CR stations. Um, economic sustainability looked at the sources of funds and the expenditures. Where are the monies, um, the money for operation coming from? And how are these money being spent? Um, while ideally we look at volunteers to run community registration, the ideal um, a lot of the participants, they take time off from their life. So what you find is that they have some stipend for the volunteers and for the staff that are there full time, they have salaries for them and then their utilities. And then something that's very important is to ensure that editorial independence is kept. Um, so you need to ensure the funds that the stations were getting, that they're accepted from individuals or organizations with similar ideals to the station. You don't want individuals to give you funds and then try to dictate how you run the station. The station should be independent and they should be their source of funds um, from people with similar organizations, um, similar thinking. Within the mandates of communities, so this was very interesting um, for me. So you have internal, external. Internal refers to those within the radio station. So we have the staff, paid volunteers, and then quite a lot of them have management communities that are there for consultation and um, input, but not on a daily basis. Within the external community, those who do not produce content, and then the general community. And communities, um, motivation, mobilization, you're looking at how they involve the wider community. So they have consultation feedback sessions. Something that I found interesting is that some stations will send out their um, staff and their producers to talk to community members um, wherever they are. If they're in the farm, if it's a go to the farm to say, did you listen to this program? Did it, um, was the broadcast good? Was the information good? What did you think about? Um, do you also want to produce some content or do you have some ideas or would you like to do an interview with us for content for the station? So they, this is how they motivate their community members to participate also. And capacity building and sharing, you have the general awareness um, and creation of activities there. So they're going to be talking about, um, this is the station, it is your station, you can come and participate, you can produce a program if you want. Then there's the introductory sessions where they say, you know what, this is how we do um, this is how we record using a recorder. This is how we edit audio. Then there are refresher sessions and continuous trainings that happen throughout um, the time. Within programming, um, what I found was that about 80% and 95% of the content was produced by the community radio stations. The remaining percentage were from government advertisements and PSAs and thematic areas, a little bit repetitive here. Um, diverse and development and entertainment focus. Um, popular genres were um, sorry, were education, gender, environmental, entertainment, and health. 
production genres, again, interview PSAs, talk shows, dramas, a plethora of views to share the information to the team. Um, this is a simplified way of looking how they select content for production. So what happened is that you have the CR team who are also members of the community putting ideas. You know, um, we have this holiday, this festival coming up, maybe we do um, a feature on it. Then based on feedback that they get from the community, um, they will now create new programs or delve into an area about it. Then donors also have some input in um, the programs that are broadcast. They say, you know what? We like the human rights section and we'd like to give you money, but we want um, for you to do more information on this. And then you also have international um, NGOs and the local NGOs. They have projects that are there. Um, and this also informs what type of programs are selected and produced. And then the station's broadcast schedule also influences this, while that also influences that. So within technology and infrastructure, um, basically what was um, across the board is that all the radio stations had some sort of an office and reception area. It could be one room that doubled as both. Um, because they're doing production, they have a meeting and rehearsal space. Um, sometimes this is also the production studio. Uh, they have their production studios where they record. Then they have a live or on-air room where they go live broadcasting. It's not just pre-recorded. They have a transmission space, very small, where the transmitter is located. And then a miscellaneous space, such as washrooms and maybe um, a little kitchen area and so forth. So these were the spaces within those CR stations. And care of equipment, um, upgrades, maintenance, insurance, um, upgrades and maintenance there on a needs basis and insurance is not a priority beyond the warranties because they're already strapped for cash. Based NGOs, local government, looking at national, you have the advocacy groups, NGOs, government, regional, Asia Pacific, SANCOM, and other um, international NGOs that operate within the region. On a wider scale, there was AMAR, UNESCO chair and community media, and other foreign governments, embassies, and consuls. So these are how the partners and partnerships were set up. And the whole idea behind partners and networks and networking is to create awareness and goodwill for the stations to ensure that they receive funding, hopefully, for um, continuity to be sustainable. So they pr promote these initiatives using these networks and the partners. And promotion, they do personal promotion. They have focused and mediated promotion, um, broadcasting, and interactive. So basically, within personal, they're talking one-on-one. -on -one, you know, I'm at the station, and this is how um, good it is. Within focus, mediated, these can include um, maybe WhatsApp messages, and sometimes they are linked to social media platforms. Then because they're radio stations and they're using transmission, and traditional broadcasting, they broadcast content about themselves to increase um, networking possibilities. And then there's interactive when they go out into the community. And by, by they, I'm talking about the participants and the producers within the stations. So um, Dr. Pentagast was talking about us forming a collective within the Caribbean region. And the ideas behind that are pulled from my doctoral project somewhat, the database idea that I want to put there. So what is a project about within the Caribbean region? Um, researching community media practices and initiatives in the Caribbean with the aim of creating a consolidated body of work that encompasses the region, a macro level focus. This is geared towards strengthening the community media sector of the community region. So basically, the project um, that I've started some work on, and it's been a little bit stalled for personal reasons um, over the last year, but the idea is to replicate the type of research that was done within the South Asia region, within the Caribbean region now, to form that kind of consolidated work. And by Caribbean, um, it is a large area, but um, CARICOM is being used as the um, 
general with specific focus on Barbados, Jamaica, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago for the initial implementation. So research in these areas, a lengthy desk review, the creation of a Caribbean database, um, will focus on these four countries. And then when that has been fine-tuned and the thematic areas agreed upon and the research instruments um, revised from the South Asian region to be more Caribbean specific, um, it will be applied to the wider um, Caribbean area. And by Caribbean, the other CARICOM countries, and hopefully beyond that too, um, to the non-English speaking Caribbean countries. So the reasons for a project like this, and I find this important to go through before I get to the final recommended rule for CR. So the reasons for this project, it is hoped that the outcomes of the proposed project in the Caribbean would result in one, more research into the community media sector within the region, creation of awareness about the sector and its possible benefits to the positive growth and development of societies. Three, capacity building of practitioners and stakeholders. Four, advocacy for more policies and guidelines that support the growth of the sector. And five, networking activities to support all of the above. So these are the five that I'm focusing on, but if there's a um, replica of this project or someone who delves into it more and wants um, some other outcomes that is definitely welcome. So what am I getting through um, to with all of this information by giving this very quick peek into the work done in the South Asia region? Um, by looking at that region, the South Asia region with specific reference to Nepal, India, and Bangladesh, um, we're hoping that the information, the lessons learned there from that perspective and from looking at other areas such as those community radio um, initiatives within Africa, and then there's also Europe, and then there's North America, that we can have um, a more vibrant community radio sector within the Caribbean region, and hopefully it goes beyond Caribbean uh, community radio and gets into community media and look at videos. So based on those global lessons, the recommended roles um, for these radio stations, these participatory um, initiatives within the Caribbean um, would be, and these are recommended because based on the project, they will be finalized. Um, one, serve geographic communities and communities of interest. Two, provide a voice to the marginalized groups. Three, create a platform for diverse voices and opinions. Four, produce complementary and alternative content from the mass media. Five, highlight and promote local and regional identities. Six, encourage open dialogue and democratic processes. Seven, contribute to social change and development. Eight, promote good governance in civil society. And nine, provide capacity building opportunities in audio production and radio broadcasting. So with this, um, the recommended role, uh, I bring this uh, talk to a close. That's a lot of information there, I know. Thank you very much, Tajrani. I hope you're hearing me. I hope I'm you're hearing me. I'm not your no face. seeing your face. Um, um, <laughs> I'm trying to get back like into the Zoom window, but I'm hearing you loud and clear. Uh, you probably should tell uh, you us, probably should tell a, us little bit about that a little photograph. bit about that photograph. <laughs> Um, so, so that, that photograph, photograph that you're seeing is actually, actually a photo, photo from, from my uh, personal, personal leave. leave. Um, I was pregnant and I now have a almost old baby girl, so she's been tempted to stall and eject. <laughs> uh, that's another reason for us for giving you, for not <laughs> being as active in terms of the community media think tank. But we really thank you for that for that presentation. Um, you know, if you've taking us through not only the significant work that you have been doing um, uh, and would have done across Southern Asia, but certainly in terms of, you know, um, I, I would say those nine recommendations in terms of the role of community media going forward, um, I think it's, it, th those, are, those are definitely recommendations I think we'd want to, to act on and to follow up. She's still hearing me? Yeah, okay. So I think we have a we have a few questions for you, um, Dr. Rampasad, and I I I think my team is going to.
help me with getting the questions to you. The first one I have here is says, of the five concepts in the conceptual framework, to what extent can the different concepts be combined <laughs> in, in terms of mapping community media? Would you, would you consider combining them? And if so, um, how? Okay, um, so the concept that was presented, uh, they, they were done for, for an understanding of the community, understanding from each one informed the, um, the, the background basically for my research work. So they, they were already combined in a way it's all um, within the thinking. So we did see and then alternative media. And these were all combined to get an understanding that informed my desk review. So, so the initial um, six uh, thematic areas that were used for the country mapping, they were based on those um, five conceptual um, areas, the thematic areas that were referenced and then refined when um, the desk review was completed for the technology and networking. What I would say since I know that a student actually asked a question is that we look forward to see how they actually would, would, would develop, develop on some of these concepts, <laughs> uh, um, these concepts that you would have presented to see you know, how we can actually deepen the research work and certainly I know some of them would be looking towards going on, um, to, towards doing graduate studies work, so we may be having another kind of conversation there. Um, there is another question. In terms of the work that you have done um, so far, when you look at the similarities with Southern Asia and similarities within the Caribbean, um, what, are, what, are, what are some of those commonalities that you're, 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 you're seeing, the similarities, differences? Um, and what are, the, what are those that you would want us to, if we were to highlight a couple, what would those be? Um, um, so the very first thing I would address there would be the diversity in the people. Um, within the South Asia region, even though you have, for example, um, I'm trying to choose the word, with India having lived there for eight, eight years of my life. Um, we talk about India as um, having Indians, but when you, you get there, there's so many differences within that population based on the cultures within each of the um, regions, within each of the state. So for example, I can pull from a Hindu background because that's my heritage. We practice Hinduism quite differently in Guyana than it is practiced in the different um, forms of God and so forth. So the diversity in the people there, that is something that is very um, similar I found with the Caribbean region because we are a very mixed background of people from all over the world. And understanding that their differences, even though you might refer to a region or refer to a country as a whole, you need to look at those bits of it there. Um, so I think that is the most prominent one for me, the diversity in the people there. Then also we need to consider um, what was important for me was to understand that formal education, going to university and school, um, that is very important, but also the grassroots knowledge. So understanding that there are different types of education there, um, that was also very important because you sit down, you listen to traditional education, you listen to the type of knowledge that's passed down orally. And these stations are keeping them for um, recording them and keeping them now. So understanding that was also very important. And then um, another area that I found um, very, very important is that when we talk about technology, um, those of us that live in urban areas, we have internet, we have social media, we have smart devices. But then these do not really work within 
the rural areas. So understanding your devices, the technology, and then understanding the um, physical areas. So we're looking at some place that um, some places that are river and areas. They have lots of islands, but then on, on the opposite end, you, you have like the Himalayan mountain ranges there. Um, so you find that the signal and the broadcast is not the same all over. So understanding topography was also very important. So the diversity in the people, their cultures and practices, um, understanding how education is operationalized, understanding technology and how that can be used, um, the pros and cons of it, and then the physical uh, region Perfect. itself and, and talk about, is also um, important. The, the, the whole digital space. Um, right now in Jamaica, for example, there is a, a, the digital switch, switch overtaking place in ter certain in terms of broadcast media um, but generally speaking we, we see what's happening in terms of the, you know just the trend towards digitalization um, how, how do we how do we support in what ways do you think that we can we can ensure <laughs> what do we do to ensure that we don't lose the community radio the sense of community radio and what what is possible within within those communities? Okay, um, so, so this, this goes back, back to who the participants are, who are, are the people that are within the station, um, and, and this, this would be trying to encourage the community members to become the producers within the station. And this comes to that whole section on creating awareness about the um, station self and getting them more uh, mobilizing and motivating community members to participate. So that is one way of ensuring that the stations stay true to the content that they are um, broadcasting. But something I would like to say is that while we look at globalization and digitization, something that I found through my travels in the South Asia region is that the producers, they were not really concerned about broadcasting to the wider population. They were just concerned about broadcasting into their small community areas that are there. So if they're located in a village with about 5,000 people, those are the people they're catering for. Um, if they have access to the internet and so forth, they will put the content on social media. Um, some of them have Facebook pages, some have websites. Um, WhatsApp, sharing the audio via WhatsApp Messenger is also there. But their main concern is to broadcast content for their communities. I think the way we preserve community radio and ensure that they're doing um, what was thought of um, their purpose um, is to ensure that there is motivation to participate and to mobilize um, participants that, from the communities that they are the serving. dilemmas that I, I, I keep presenting that they're faced with in community media. As I say, I mean, those who are producing are more concerned with just you know, meeting the needs and aspirations and information needs and behavioral needs within that community. And they're not necessarily concerned with what's happening in terms of the changing technology, except to the extent where it can help them to, to deepen their message, yes, and to share what's happening to the wider world, but not, that's not their interest, is not about broadcasting to the, to, to beyond their, their, their community space. So you, you encourage participation. It's all about empowerment. And then, interestingly, when they, these volunteers and these community people develop this, the, the, the required skill set to keep their community media enterprise going, then they're snapped up by the national or, or those areas <laughs> that they're thinking of getting into in the first place. How, how do we address that kind of dilemma? In other words, how do we sustain the empowerment effort at the community level? I was able In to the um, empowerment observe. effort at the community level. So what I was able to um, observe is that the continuous training. So initially, when a station is being set up, you will have these um, the facilitators. For example, um, the INGOs that will go in and help them to build a station, then you will have professors and communication students that might um, go in to help train them on how to record, how to edit, 
how to present on radio the nitty gritty, as I call it, um, the specifics. Um, they will go in and they will train them. But these individuals are known as facilitators now because what they do is they just go in initially, help to set up, help to train, and then they exit. And then those who are trained, they continuously train other individuals. So what I observed is that um, some of the producers, they will now take over training sessions, capacity building and sharing. That's where those terms come from. They would now have those sessions. And when new um, volunteers and participants come into the station, a cycle of capacity building and sharing happening there. And it's funny that you say that um, once the community radio uh, participants are trained, they're snapped up by media entities. Um, I also observed that a lot of the um, participants who were volunteers, they were volunteer producers getting stipends. Once they're trained and they will spend a couple of years and establish themselves, they move on and that's very okay. A lot of them move on to um, media entities, but quite a lot of them um, moved on to university um, to study and to work within the development sphere from a different area. So you have that empowerment that is also happening and continue, continues to happen outside of the station, outside of the community space. But um, specifically, the continuous training of, of participants and volunteers to ensure that as some leave, you have some time. I have two final mm -hmm. questions for you. Um, the first one really has to do with the, in terms of the, the, the lessons learned from your research in, in Southeast Asia. Um, how do you think we can apply that to the Caribbean region? Is there a specific lesson or two that you have, you know, you think would definitely need to be applied within the, the Caribbean space? How? <laughs> space, how? <laughs> oh, um... So what I saw was some of these producers, even though they were, they, they were very brave and they, they will question, they were unafraid. I think that's the word I'm looking for. They, um, the political questions and to hold um, those who are in charge of our politicians, our government, were unafraid to hold their local governments and those within governmental um, organizations that should be helping the communities. They were unafraid to question them and to hold them unaccountable. And I think that is something that I um, want to see have these radio stations more within the Caribbean region. The little that I've done so far, the work there. So the encourage dialogue and democratic processes, I think that is very, very um, important. Something else that I saw was observation of the um, oral and traditional knowledge. A lot of programming is being done where they the elders in the community, they record songs, these folk songs, and they are preserving culture. And I think that is very, very important also to preserve your culture and to ensure that it's there for the newer generations to know, um, know their history, know their background. So those are two things that I really, really admired and I hope to see happen more within the region. Thank you very much. Of course, you know the big discussion it's in the in the context of the um, the impact of technology and 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 definitely social media um, on the this, on the media world. Uh, what in your own thought, <laughs> in your own words, at, the, at this particular moment, what is the future for community media in the Caribbean? where the whole idea about what is a community uh, comes into play because tra traditionally the team media, they're looking at the communities they serve in a more geographical sense. But with the advent technology, the digital world, we're looking at them now coming online, as I said, um, they're having Facebook pages or they're having websites, um, they're having streaming of content live or they put their content up there for communities of interest now. So for example, um, I'm currently in Germany, but if I want to get some information from Ghana, I want to get maybe some um, traditional Amerindian songs or some traditional uh, chutney music from Guyana, being able to go online to one of the stations where they save their content or their streaming and listen to that, um, that would make me very happy. So I think that's where it all fits in. We're 
looking at not just the geographic community, but we're expanding the community of interest wherever they are. So if you have people migrating out of their uh, geographical spaces around the world, but they still want to remain connected and still learn what's happening there and see how they can also be a resource. Um, so that's where the digital comes into play for me. Quality. Just put your hands together for Dr. Tijrani Rampasad Skorka um, for that very engaging um, lecture and discussion. Um, I just want to, in closing, uh, underscore a couple of the points that you made, certainly in terms of um, recognizing that there is participation plays a key role in the, in the sustainability of community radio. And certainly we have to not only depend on the volunteers, but if we're going to sustain what's happening at that level, we need to make sure that there is continuous training and capacity building. Uh, I, I think it's also important for, for us to recognize that you know, community radio needs to have some level of independence, um, and how that is arranged is it's important for us to, to, to look to see if we can develop the, the kinds of models that will advance that, that, that sense of independence among community radio. And of course, as you mentioned in the lecture, understanding the internal and external makeup of not just the media system that you're working with, but also the community itself, um, whether that community be a community of geography or a community of interest. Um, you know, certainly giving credit to local knowledge. We've seen in so many places where ignoring local knowledge, we do that to our own peril. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, the kind of knowledge based, uh, based on history, based on just, you know, uh, the, the memories that we have there um, that certainly um, will, will help us in terms of not only understanding the work that we're doing, but planning for the future as well. So giving credit to the local, to the local knowledge um, and, of course, developing the right kinds of partnerships and network. Uh, this, this partnership and network that we have seen certainly um, through you and the University of Hyderabad as well as uh, the work you're doing in that region and, and bringing back home some of that to the University of Guyana and with uh, all of us working within the University of the West Indies, uh, Mona campus and specifically the Western Jamaica campus, that's part of the partnership that we're networking that will help us to advance the discussion um, within this, this, this area, and certainly development of the, the particular area of community media and community radio, in, uh, to be more specific. And as I said when you just ended, uh, we, we're definitely going to have to work on actioning um, some of those nine recommendations that you have, you have left with us. Thank you very much, Tajrani. Um, it, was, it was really an engaging uh, session. We appreciate you. We appreciate the work you're doing, and we wish you all the best to you and, you and your family. <laughs> finally, finally, I want to thank again all the lecturers who have contributed to, to this event. Um, and we, we single out uh, Dr. Alpha Obika, our coordinator and Karamat lecturer here. <laughs> We also want, want to thank the director of CARMAC, uh, Dr. Livingston White. I, I think there was a note I saw that, that the dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Education, Dr. Professor Coenberg, uh, had joined us and thank her for the, the, the commendation. Um, thank you very much for the support. We want to thank the tech team. They've been going all day and certainly even with the, the, the little challenges that we've had at the start of this lecture, I mean, we know that you would come through, and we, we thank you, um, we thank the team, certainly, Andre, <laughs> Hewitt, and Nikola Robinson. Um, I, I, I think we want to thank all our sponsors as well. Um, the team has not given me something to make sure that I don't leave out the, the sponsors, but I, uh, water, oh, water, water, water. <laughs> I know I can say this because Andre is going to do something that, um, that we do to make sure that these productions work. 
Um, so I, I, I could probably wait for the list and then do the list and then, but anyway, Andre will, will fix this all up, but we want to thank Walter uh, in particular. Um, and, and, and certainly um, our colleagues working in a local community radio station, More FM, um, they, they carried the, the, the symposium and are in fact still carrying this lecture. Uh, and, and it's really good to see that the community radio systems can you know, support in this way. I want to thank the West Mac IMC, WJC group. And uh, I'm going to just call their names so that it can be recorded. Alethea Campbell, Lainey Coach, Brianna, or is it, yeah, Brian. Brian Irons, Shaniqua Sweeter with Shaniqua Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Celine Thompson, Luanique Hodges, Amani Dickinson, Ronaldo, Ronaldo Burke, and Shade Berry. I got that right, right? Awesome. Folks, stand. I know that Andre is not turning the camera on you, but I want to take this opportunity to just applaud you myself. Thank you very much. Thank you, really. I look forward to, your, to your, your final presentation. Yes, I do. So, and, and of course, thank you all who have chosen to participate in, in this lecture. And we wish you a good evening. Actually, I should just say good night, everybody. Thank you.